comparing yourself, comparing your progress in self-development with that of others will leave you vulnerable on three counts. You'll either feel inferior, superior, or impressed. All three of these states are dangerous because they all disregard the underlying principle of our true connection with each other, which is mutual love and regard based on independently generated self-esteem. To protect yourself from this vulnerability, make sure that your attention remains turned within towards the spiritual experience of pure pride. Staying centered in your elevated self-respect will help you remain undisturbed by others around you. Keep asking yourself, who am I? How would my spiritual personality respond to this event or person? This will help to center you further and allow you to enjoy the successful efforts of others. When I read this piece, I thought, I love daddy's way of unpacking anything because first of all, she takes you into the process of the negative aspects and the results of that of the of those negative aspects and then takes you into the positive aspects that will help us to grow spiritually but i was thinking of the word comparison because Comparison is in our lives on a daily basis, in everything that we do, in everything that we see, in fact. When I go to buy my groceries, I compare the prices from three main supermarkets, Woolworths, Pick and Pay, ShopRite. Knowing that ShopRite is the one that will give me cheaper club prices that could uh, maybe fit my pockets. But I also know the quality of the products that they are selling. And of course, pick and pay is in the middle. And of course, Woolworths is seen as one of the best. And so comparison is really one of the major things in our lives. We compare the quality of everything because the quality of things in life come with a price. And it is at that point that you decide what is what quality can I afford? So I was looking at the word comparison and I was thinking, the vastness of it. Yeah. You estimate sometimes within the process of comparison. You weigh yourselves against others. Even the houses that you live in, the way they are furnished, sometimes have everything to do with comparing yourself to your neighbor's houses. How does my neighbor's house look like? So comparison is really such a big part of our lives. And sometimes we don't really think very much in depth about the quality of comparison itself. 
it's become such a big part of our lives. I mean, fashion, you know. Fashion used to play a big part in my life because I used to think my self-esteem, my self-respect depended on how I'm dressed. What's the price of my shoes? Well, how, I mean, the clothes that I'm wearing, you know. And of course, those things stay in people's minds, people who know you, that when Fatima walks up to me, the first thing that I do, I look down at her feet because I want to see which shoes is she wearing today, you know, because Fatima is a shoe fanatic. She loves shoes, you know. And so, yeah. That was what was coming to my mind when I was looking at comparison. I mean, we can talk even more about it. So even when you go into business, people who are selling jewelry, you know, the quality of the diamonds, you know, that kind of stuff. So that really took me into a space that um, was normal. But she took me into the depths of comparing myself to other people. And so I thought I would just take what she said line for line. So the first one, is she says that comparing your progress in self-development with that of others we leave you vulnerable on three counts. You will either feel inferior or superior, or you'll be impressed. And when I was thinking about where these three words come from, what are they driven by? Inferiority is driven by the ego. Superiority, obviously, is ego. And when you are impressed by somebody else, you are influenced. You come under that person's influence. You look up to them. And so, these are things to us which were normal in life, growing up, living life, you know, to be impressed by people whom you think are better than you, whom you think do certain things better than you. But then the end result of being impressed by them can have two results. You will either feel, I'll never reach their stage. I'm totally, I'm a total failure. Or you will look at them and say, ah, I'm better. And so this creates an imbalance, especially in relationships. So I was thinking, Being impressed is something that happens all the time because as human beings, we're always looking for something better, something to motivate. So how do you work with being impressed by somebody? Can I tell you a little story about that? You all know I work in the performing arts and I've worked in the performing arts for most of my life. And having worked at the space theater itself, I've seen many, many actors on stage. I have seen people who become so absorbed by the characters that they are playing, that 
you become convinced that that person is exactly that character that they are portraying. In other words, the performance is so incredible. It is so powerful. You are speechless, totally impressed. You are pulled by that person. And all you ever would like is to act like that person. Or if you're a writer, write like the person who wrote the script that the actor is performing. And so there I am, I'm impressed, pulled by that. So there was a, a lady that arrived from Port Elizabeth, a black lady who came to work at the Space Theater. I didn't know her. I just met her for the first time. And she was given a role in a play called Madea, which is a great play. And she was going to play opposite one of South Africa's best, best actresses, Yvonne Bryceland. And I know Yvonne, I've seen her on stage many times. She can be anything. She can be a berghi. She can be anything. Because when she sets her mind on that character, she becomes that. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. This lady, this lady from Port Elizabeth who's gonna be acting opposite Yvonne Bryceland. I hope she knows who Yvonne Bryceland is. I hope she, she knows how powerful Yvonne Bryceland can be on stage and that she'll be able to cope with her because they'll be in a play where they, she will be working against her at some point in the script. So I'm sitting there anxiously rooting for my black sister from Port Elizabeth, because I know this lady, Yvonne Bryce. She's a powerhouse. Then we got to the climax of the story where the two women began to quarrel because they were disagreeing on a point. And of course, the black lady in the story is the maid. But she refused to bow down and take the role of the maid and, 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 and be subservient. She made her point to the madam very strongly, so much that the argument became so heated that there was pin drop silence in the theater. The two ladies, each one was trying to put her point across to the other one. They got to a point where they were like two cats hissing at each other. And I sat there completely hypnotized because not knowing this new lady, the black lady who was coming to act at the space theater for the first time. I did not know her qualities, her powers, her passion for acting. And she stood toe to toe with this other lady, Yvonne Bryceland. And I learned a lesson from that performance that do not start off by comparing two people when you only know the one person's skills, and you don't know the other person's skills. That was my first lesson. Secondly, I was afraid for her. I was afraid for her. But I was afraid for her because I did not know her. I did not know her qualities. I did not know her strength. I did not know her gift as an actress. And I learned that lesson that night, that before you compare, first of all, we have to see the abilities of the two people that you're comparing. And then I ended up being impressed by her also. I mean, I was really, really impressed by her. And as I got to know her more, 
I realized that there wasn't any genre of theater that she could not act in. She could do Shakespeare, she could do Greek theater, she could do any classics. And I was very happy <laughs> that I was humbled in that way. And I learned this lesson. So Daddy takes us to the next stage and she says that. All three of these states are dangerous because they all disregard the underlying principle of our true connection with each other which is mutual love and regard based on independently generated self-esteem. I'm gonna take again this point back to the black actress because in the seventies, most of us were not able to study theater at university, but she studied Shakespeare, somehow, somewhere, by herself. She studied the Greeks, somehow, somewhere, by herself, to enhance her acting skills. But then, for me personally, the end result is that when the two ladies got off the stage after the play, what happened? I think what happened was Yvonne Bryceland shook hands with Nom Lengonyeni and congratulated her on her powerful acting. Because it, one of the best things in the world is when you have another actor who's acting opposite you who is as powerful as you are, because that generates the energy of the play, the energy of acting which results in the audience being pulled into the story even more. And so that mutual respect for one another, that love, that appreciation that daddy was talking about is what, when I was thinking about the end result of that performance between the two ladies, and I'm sure they became friends. Now, going back into this process, that that is not giving us advice and a way forward. To protect yourself from this vulnerability, make sure that your attention remains turned within towards the spiritual experience of pure pride. So what comes to my mind is focus. It's one thing to focus on the external, but the external is an influence on me internally. So when I sit in silence and I look at the experiences of external influences on me internally, then I can begin to see the influence of external experiences on me. Me and my shoes that cost a lot of money, I was taking from a possession to feel good about myself not knowing that I already have goodness inside of me. And daddy says, keep asking yourself, who am I? And that is a very, very important question to constantly keep asking yourself, who am I? Because now I know my identity completely. Before, I used to think I'm this body. I used to think I'm a lady, a woman, female. I used to think I'm an African, I'm black. 
But having come into the spiritual university and studied, I learned that I am not just this body. Actually, my true identity is that I am a soul. I am this point of light, this life force that's inside of me that brings this body to life. I can think because I, the soul, I have a mind. I can also look at the qualities of my thoughts because I, the soul, I have an intellect and my intellect is part of my mind. It has the ability of knowing right and wrong. It works with my conscience. So when I know who I really am, it helps me. Because the other thing that I know definitely about myself is that I have divine qualities in me. I have the virtues in me. There is the quality of purity that is a part of me. Peace is a part of me. Power, spiritual power is in me. Love. Love is not something that I look for outside from other people. I am love. So I have all these quality, qualities inside of me. And so by asking myself that question, who am I? All of these things come up that I already have them. So to get rid of comparing myself with others, inferiority complexes, superiority complexes. Those things came to me because I forgot who I was and I used them. I used my ego to protect myself. I became hard because it was the only way to defend myself from the outside world. But now I know I don't have to use negativity to defend myself. In fact, I don't even have to defend myself. Now I know that everything that I do, if I do it with love, love softens even the hardest person. When I do anything with care, Care is also a part of love. You know, it's words that come from the word love. I do everything with care. I am actually re-empowering my innate qualities, my God-given qualities, the qualities that I always say are my DNA my spiritual DNA. And it is the same DNA that God has. And so that is pointing me back to myself, to my original self. And when I do that, my self-development will work because I poured the petrol of my innate qualities into my self-development. And when I'm busy focusing on myself, I have very little time to focus on what's happening outside of me. And when the outside mm -hmm. comes inside of me, I will not react in the old way. I'm going to stop for a moment and think of a positive way of handling the negativity that is coming from the outside. And then 
I just do what I have to do. Simple. So, today, when we leave this program, just watch yourself and see if you're comparing yourself to others. When you sit in silence, just look inside and see if there's still any traces of inferiority in yourself. And now you know when there is inferiority in yourself is because you were looking down on yourself when you saw that another person was better than you. So change that around in that silence and tell yourself I'm a soul and I have all of these divine qualities in me and I am going to develop these qualities in me until they become a part of me that I'm using on a daily basis without even trying but they just come up automatically and I'm that. I'm Shanti. Let's just sit quietly and just have a moment of reflection. When I turn my eyes inside, I look at myself with my third eye, the eye of the soul. It is very easy for me to see my self-development. Am I peaceful? Do I generate peace into the outside world just by my face, using my face? A smile is all, it doesn't cost anything. When I smile, I attract smiles from others. So I bring happiness. When I laugh, I spread joy even for someone who was in a moment of sorrow, when they will hear my laughter, that laughter will pull them and remind them also and make them also smile and maybe giggle a little bit. When I sit back and I ask myself, who am I? Who do I belong to? Even that one question of who do I belong to brings a smile on my face because I belong to the most powerful, the most amazing, the ocean of love, the ocean of peace, the ocean of purity. So why wouldn't I be happy just by knowing who I belong to and just by knowing the qualities of this superior being? Because I am pulled to him by those qualities, God's qualities. I want to have them. I want to be like him. I want them to fill my life completely so that wherever I go, I just spread happiness and peace. And this is what I'm going to do today when I leave my house. I'm just gonna spread a smile on my face and give happiness. 
en chaque temps. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. <laughs>